Good morning, internet friends. My name is Lexi and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be doing my October wrap up. It is freezing where I am right now, which is why I'm in a very long and comfy like oversized sweater. I've got some hot coffee here. I wanted to do this wrap up initially in front of all my bookcases, but it's just so cold outside that I kind of thought I wanted to be cozy and warm in my bedroom. So I hope you don't mind a more casual wrap up. I have got one, two, three. So I've got 13 books to talk to you about. It's gonna be probably a lengthy wrap up um, and I'm very excited. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm also gonna be talking about a couple of books that I read in the month of September because I didn't actually do a wrap up for that month. So let's start with those. All of these books I actually read during the 24 hour Hufflepuff Halloween themed readathon that I did with my friends. And we all got to watch like movies together and bake together and it was really cool. So. I'll link that above if you wanna watch that too. The first book that I read for that was Coraline, and this is by Neil Gaiman, and I annotated it. I absolutely loved this book so much. I watched the movie right afterwards, and I love the movie as well, but I think I actually preferred the book. This is about a little girl named Coraline who discovers a door in her flat that she's living in with her parents, and the door opens up to a brick wall, and then she discovers one night that it actually opens up into an other world and she goes into that other world where she finds that she has an identical set of parents and everything is about the same but everything is also slightly off. It's pretty creepy. I would consider this a scary story for middle grade but I also thought it was more intriguing rather than like horrifying or anything. I thought it was fantastic like really beautiful writing. It was really really incredible and actually I read this in September like towards the end of it but then I reread it in October. So I've read this twice because I decided to do my analytical paper on it for my grad school. If you haven't picked this up yet and you're interested in middle grade, if you're interested in like children falling into other worlds, you know, that's like a very common trope. It's one of my favorite tropes in literature. I would say to pick this up. I highly recommend it. I thought this was one of the best books that I've read this year and I really loved it. Just, I, I loved it a lot. <laughs> Okay, next I read two graphic novels. The first one is Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell, and this is illustrated by Faith Erin Hicks. I loved this book so much. This is perfect for the fall time. I think you can still get away with really enjoying it and reading it like throughout the year just because it's such a cute story, but I highly recommend it for the fall time. It's just so adorable. The illustrations are gorgeous. And this is just a really, really cute story about two friends who work every single year together at a pumpkin patch and this is their final year at this pumpkin patch and they decide to really make it memorable and have a really good time. They get into some hijinks. It's it's really, really wonderful and it's just kind of like wholesome content. I just loved it so much. The next book that I read was Through the Woods and this is written and illustrated by Emily Carroll and I love this book so much. Totally different vibes. This I think will give you a lot of cozy vibes. This will give you all the creepy chilly vibes and I highly recommend both. The illustrations in this one are just phenomenal. These are short stories. It's a short story compilation all by Emily Carroll and they're all creepy stories. I had so many moments where I was creeped out. Uh, it was so much fun to read. I, I loved all of the illustrations and I loved that it was scary, but it wasn't too, too scary. But yeah, some of the pictures in here are just insanely beautiful. So I highly recommend both of these graphic novels, actually. I thought they were both really well done and I really enjoyed both of them. Okay, next I read six books for my spooky, scary, ghost stories middle grade vlog. And that was a really, really fun vlog to do because I actually got to explore a haunted hotel and I got thoroughly creeped out by some of these. So it was really, really fun. Also, if you hear snoring at all, it's my dog Goldie and I don't wanna wake her up, so sorry. <laughs> So the first one is the only one out of this pile that I actually did not finish, and that is Henry and Eva and the Castle on the Cliff. And this is by Andrea Ports. So the premise of this really intrigued me. It's all about Henry and Eva who are siblings and their parents mysteriously die in a boating accident. And then they are then haunted by ghosts who try to tell them that it wasn't actually an accident. And so it's a little bit of a murder mystery. It's got a ton of things that I think a lot of kids are gonna enjoy. I personally really 
really enjoyed the setting. I really enjoyed the plot setup. But there's a couple of things in here that I didn't personally enjoy. Mostly it was the narration style. So the narrator is addressing me the entire time and it's in present tense. And it just, it didn't feel as like relaxing to read, but I think that it's actually gonna keep up engagement with middle graders. So I wouldn't necessarily not pick this up just because I didn't connect with it because I think that there's a lot of potential. I think this is really going to connect to a lot of kids too, which in my opinion, it's way more important that actual middle graders like this than me because I'm not the age demographic. And I think that's why it was written in first person present tense, but like including the audience as well by saying you're watching Henry, you stand there. It's not necessarily something that I know a lot of adults enjoy, but I think that it can really keep up the engagement for middle graders. So if any of that stuff sounds interesting to you, I highly recommend picking up Henry and Eva. I think it has a lot of potential. I think a lot of people are gonna like it. I do still intend on finishing this book at some point though, because I do think that I'm going to like it. I just wanted to put it down. I didn't like wanna get into a reading slump and I don't ever like to force myself to read a book if I'm not feeling it at the time because I'm a big mood reader and I have found that if I force my way through a book instead of kind of picking it up organically whenever I want, I end up not liking it as much. So decided to put it down for a little bit but I will be picking it back up in the future. Next here, I've got Dead Voices, and this is by Catherine Arden, and I absolutely loved this book so much. This is the scariest book that I read for the entire like middle grade ghost story section, and it genuinely terrified me, but like in all of the best ways, it was creepy and atmospheric, and the writing in it was absolutely perfect. I highly recommend Dead Voices if you're interested in a creepy, scary ghost story middle grade. So first of all, this is actually a sequel to the series written by Katherine Arden, and the first book is Small Spaces, which I haven't read yet. I do intend on picking up Small Spaces very soon. Probably recommend that you should probably start with that one, but I really wanted the ghost story, so I skipped ahead and I went to this one, and I was perfectly fine with reading it. I do recommend starting with the first book, though, if you want to avoid any spoilers at all. So this is about Ollie, Brian, and Coco, and they're all on a vacation trip to a ski lodge with their parents. And when they get there, they realize that the ski lodge is probably haunted. And it kind of goes from there. There's lots and lots of scary plot twists, and it's a really, really interesting fast-paced storyline. I absolutely loved it. It's a great book, too, if you're interested in a friendship dynamic book. I loved all of the friendship dynamics in this group. I thought this was just really, really well done and very scary, so I highly recommend this. Next, I read both of Victoria Schwab's books. I read City of Ghosts, which is her very first book in this series, and then I read Tunnel of Bones, and they were completely fantastic. So this series is about a girl named Cass and her best friend Jacob, and Jacob is a ghost, and Cass can see ghosts. She actually gets the ability to see ghosts after she almost dies, but then she comes back, and so she can now step into something called the veil, which is that in-between place where she can see ghosts. So in the very first book, Cass goes to Edinburgh with her parents. Her parents are essentially starring in almost a documentary slash reality television style ghost story show, and it's where her dad talks about all of the history side of the ghosts, and her mom talks more about like the spooky aspects of the ghosts, and they have no idea that Cass can actually see ghosts. And when they go to Edinburgh, Cass and Jacob get into a heap of a mess with a very, very scary ghost villain, the lady in red, and it's very, very scary but I loved it so much. And then in this one here, they actually go to Paris and they have to figure out things with a poltergeist. And I think that the second one actually is my favorite out of the series. I hope that there's more because I absolutely loved this. I love Victoria Schwab. I love her writing. I want more of it. Let's get some coffee. Mm. Next, I have Constable and Toop, and this is by Gareth P. Jones. I thought this was really, really great. Um, I did say in the vlog that the writing kind of is more reminiscent for me personally of YA, but I really, really enjoyed it. This has gotten a ton of great reviews. I know a lot of people really liked it too. I think I got more into it the more I was reading it. It is a little bit more of a slow paced read, so if you're not interested in kind of investing 
in that slow paced read. You might wanna skip it, but I really enjoyed it personally. This is just under 400 pages, so it is pretty lengthy for a middle grade, but I really liked it. So it kind of centers around two different storylines that intermingle. It's about a boy named Sam Toop who can see ghosts and communicate with ghosts and try to help ghosts go on to the other side. And then it also follows a ghost named Mr. Lapswood who is kind of struggling within the ghost government to find his place. And he ends up kind of being like a detective trying to find out what happened to a missing ghost. And their worlds kind of coincide. I would say that the majority of this actually takes place like from adults perspectives, but they're all dead, they're all ghosts. So it does work for middle grade, but the story in this is less focused on a middle grade protagonist and more on this adult ghost protagonist. While I really enjoyed it, I've never read a middle grade like that. Normally the middle grades that I pick up all kind of center around middle grade aged kids. And this one did focus on Sam, but I think it focused more on the adult ghosts, but I, I really, really enjoyed it. And essentially there is like a plague that's going on that is wiping out a ton of ghosts and Sam and Mr. Laps would kind of have to like tag team and figure out what's going on together. And then finally I have here Neil Gaiman's The Graveyard Book. I listened to this on audiobook while I read along. And I have to say, it's it's definitely one of my favorite books of all time that I've ever read. I was not expecting that. I was not expecting to love it so much. Oh my God, it was wonderful though. I just, I thought that the writing was rich and lyrical and beautiful. I happen to just love Neil Gaiman's writing style. I know that he isn't necessarily for everyone, but I think he's brilliant. This is one of the most beautiful, well-written middle grades I've ever read in my entire life, and I read tons and tons of middle grades. This is about a boy named Nobody Owens who wanders into a graveyard as a baby after his family has been brutally murdered and he is raised by ghosts. There's a ton of different plot twists in here towards the end that I didn't see coming. There's a really beautiful underlying magical plot that again, like I didn't see coming at all and I thought it was really, really well done. If you're going to pick this up, I highly recommend that you listen to the HarperCollins revised audiobook. So Neil Gaiman narrated the original ones and I listened to his narration for one of the versions of Coraline and I absolutely loved it but I highly recommend that you pick up the full cast version for this because it was just perfect. They composed music for this audiobook. They have tons of different voice actors. Everything was perfect. Best audiobook I've ever listened to. I loved it with my entire heart and I highly, highly recommend it. I highly recommend the book. I highly recommend the audiobook. Phenomenal, perfect. Maybe the best book that I read for the month. I think it was actually, yes, it was definitely the best book I've read this month. I loved it. And then finally, I have my Spookathon wrap up. So originally I had planned that I was going to also do Witchathon, but I ended up getting kind of sick, which is why I did not finish my Spookathon. I think I did days one through six. And then I got the flu that night, which was super fun. And so I didn't actually end up getting to read anymore for that readathon. And then right after that, I had four different papers slash group projects that were due within the span of like three days. So I ended up not doing Witchathon, which is a really big bummer, but I did participate in Spookathon and I had so much fun doing Spookathon. I did daily vlogs uh, every single day except for the final day because I got really sick. But yeah, it was it was so much fun and I'll, I'll link one of the days up there or something. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. The first book that I read for Spookathon was Neverworld Wake and this is by Marisha Pestle and this was phenomenal. I'm going to be kind of vague in my description of it just because I went into this book really vague, not knowing a lot, and I think I enjoyed my experience just a lot better than if I had known a ton about it. I will say that this is a weird book, okay? It is, it, it's a book for people who like weird writing. I personally love weird writing. I love um, surrealism. I love magical realism. I love stuff that is a little bit creepy. I love stuff that is slightly paranormal. I like things that make me think that a bump in the night could be so much more. You know what I mean? Like I like that 
weird blend of reality and the fantastical in everyday life, it makes it so that the fantasy almost feels more palpable, like it could happen to me. The way I think about magic is I don't necessarily think about it as in a fairy tale. I think about magic as this this dark and mysterious thing that isn't always beautiful, it's, it's weird. And so I tend to gravitate towards books that have elements of those things because I enjoy all of those things in literature. And this book had it all. <laughs> so if you're looking for kind of a weird book, you're gonna wanna pick this up. This is a thriller, it's young adult, and it was phenomenal. I read one other book by Marcia Pessel and that was Special Topics in Calamity Physics and I loved that book, I thought it was great but I love this book even more. This book follows a girl named Beatrice whose boyfriend tragically dies and she goes back to see her old high school friends to kind of reminisce a little bit. In the middle of the night at this crumbling mansion where they're all staying, a stranger knocks on the door and he seems to be blown in by the storm, but he's not getting wet by the rain. And when they open it, they're a little scared because he seems to know who they are. He introduces himself and he says that time has stopped, that they have been snagged on something called a Neverworld Wake. And to get out of the time snag, they have to make an impossible decision together. The decision has to be unanimous and um, I'm not gonna say what the question is, like what the decision is, what any of that stuff is, uh, but essentially it kind of goes on from there and we get to see tons of things unpack and unfold and it's just this really, really well-written, interesting story. It, I will say that it did feel like a thriller because the entire time I was reading this, it felt like I was holding my breath and you are trying to figure out what's actually going on. But yeah, I just, I really enjoyed reading this a lot. I thought it was so well done. One of my favorite books of the entire month for sure and I highly recommend it but I highly recommend it to people who like weird things because this is kind of weird and I really dug it. I really enjoyed it a lot. Next, I read Rules for Vanishing and this is by Kate Alice Marshall and I loved this book so much. This is phenomenal. This is um, a paranormal thriller. So if you're not into paranormal, you're not gonna want this because this is extremely paranormal and I loved it. This is about a girl named Sarah whose sister Becca disappeared. Becca disappeared trying to track down this ghost. So where they live, there is a girl named Lucy Gallows who apparently is a ghost who lives on this very mysterious long road. And to help the ghost, you need to get on the road. And if you mess up, if you leave the path, if you don't follow the rules to this weird road game, then there are actual monsters and demons who are waiting to attack you and to mess with you. Sarah decides to try to find this mysterious road and play this weird game that comes with going on the road so that she can find her sister, Becca. She ends up going with all of her friends and we kind of follow their journey. It is wonderful. It is so scary. Out of all of the books that I read, this is the scariest. This was this scared me a lot. And you can see how scared I am in several of my vlogs. Like I am just terrified. I eventually kind of acclimated a little bit more towards the end of it. I'm not used to reading thrillers, so maybe if you read tons of thrillers, you will not find this scary at all. But this was like one of my first literal thrillers and it scared me so much. So I really, really, really enjoyed it a lot. Pick this up if you're interested in something scary, but also just really well done. Oh, and there is a sapphic relationship in here. It's not really touched on too much, but I did think it was well done. So yeah, I just, I really, really enjoyed it and I highly recommend it. And then finally, we've got two books here. I didn't finish either one, but I do intend on picking them up and trying to finish during the month of November. So the first one here is House of Salt and Sorrows and this is by Erin A. Craig. And I got a little, less than halfway through it. I really, really like this book a lot and the only reason I haven't finished reading it is just because school has been a lot recently. There's been a ton of things that have been due and I try to put that before reading, obviously. But this is a retelling of The 12 Dancing Princesses. It's a little bit more dark. It's about a, a girl named Anna Lee who lives in this beautiful castle called High Moor and it's on a cliff by the sea and she believes that her sisters 
who have been dying are actually being murdered. So it's a murder mystery. It feels kind of a little bit almost like a thriller. It's not really, but it kind of feels like that because she's trying to figure out what's happening. There's a lot of fantasy involved. There's paranormal aspects involved. I think so far it's just really, really well done. The writing is beautiful and I'm really enjoying it and I can't wait to finish reading it. And then the last book I have to talk to you about is Dark Matter, and this is by Blake Crouch. I started the audiobook for this, I think on the last day of Spookathon, and I've just been listening to it whenever I'm in my car. I love this book. Like, I have such high hopes for it. I have such high hopes for the ending. I feel like this has the potential to become one of my all-time favorite books. <laughs> so this is an adult sci-fi thriller, and it is so good, it's so good. It's about a professional professor named Jason who is married to the love of his life, Daniela, and he has a son named Charlie. And he goes to congratulate one of his colleagues one night who is celebrating a success at a bar. And then on the way home from that, he is hit over the head and drugged. And when he wakes up, he's in a totally different place. Like it, his name is the same, but his life is completely different. He's not married to Daniela anymore. He's this very successful scientist and he's trying to figure out what's actually happening. Was the first time a dream? Um, is he hallucinating? Is he crazy? What's going on? And let me tell you, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. I don't tend to reach for a ton of sci-fi because I'm really picky with the sci-fi that I like, but this kind of has a ton of elements that I do like, and I can't tell you what those elements are because they are all spoilers, and I don't want to spoil anything for you. It's so good, though. I really, really, really want to make priority of just finishing this book because it's so good. It's so good, honestly. Well, that is it, you guys. That's everything that I've read during the month of October and a little bit of September. Did you discover any new favorites in the month of October? If you did, please let me know down in the comments below. I love getting new recommendations from you guys. I always write them down and I put them in my Goodreads, and it's kind of one of the ways that I get most of the new books that I'm interested in picking up and reading. So, I love you so much. And until the next time, book lovers, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book, and I will talk to you later. Bye. Mm -hmm.